in this presentation, I'm going to show you that dark matter does exist, but it has different properties than it's expected to. Historically, dark matter was conceptualized centuries ago for different reasons. In mid-1800, James Maxwell did some work on electric and magnetic fields, and his equations required dark matter. The problem here was, if the dark matter does exist, does it move with the Earth, or is it stationary relative to the Earth? To answer the question, there's an observation and an experiment, and these two contradict each other. The observation is called the stellar aberration, and the experiment is called the Michael Somori experiment. Let's look at these two. It was 1728, and astronomer James Bradley noticed that a star's position shifted from the actual position year-round, depending on where the Earth was and the, the motion that it had. And to correct for that, he needed to tilt his telescope by about 0 0.006 degrees. He called this stellar aberration. And to give you a better idea of this, is that stars are so far away that light comes in a straight line, so no matter where you are. So if you're here, the star is in this direction. But to actually see it, you have to tilt the telescope this much, 0 0.006 degrees, which is not exactly this much. As the Earth finds itself in this position, the tilt is still there. As it goes to December, six months later, they're still tilt. As it comes back, they're still tilt. Anyway, you look at it, there is tilt. The cause of this aberration the cause, was assigned to dark matter. See, if the uh, dark matter moved with the Earth, the, earth, the earth, dark matter was stationary with the Earth, you should not see aberration. The fact that you have to tilt the telescope was proof that somehow the tilt, the, the telescope of the Earth was moving compared relative to dark matter, whatever was outside of it. So there was relative motion, according to this idea, there was relative motion between the telescope and space itself, and the dark matter space itself. As an analogy, uh, if you're sitting in a car at a red light on a rainy day and there's no wind, you can see raindrops falling straight down since you and the rain are in the same frame of reference, you're both not moving. But as soon as the light changes and you start moving, raindrops seem to bend toward you. That's because the raindrops and you are, in, are not in the same frame of reference anymore. Now, if there was such motion, it would create some kind of wind, much like if you put your hand outside your car, while the car is moving, you feel the wind because there's motion between you and the air. So what Michael and Morris did, they set up an interferometer to try to figure out how fast the Earth is moving through this dark matter, through the space itself. Unfortunately, they found no such wind, which created a problem. According to stellar aberration, there has to be motion between the Earth and dark matter in space itself. But according to Michael Somori experiment, the Earth is stationary relative to dark matter, relative to space. This problem needs to be solved. So at the time, a new model came up, a new idea came up called relativity. And relativity said, let's get rid of dark matter altogether. Let's say it doesn't exist. There's no such thing as dark matter. Well, relativity became the gold standard because it actually explained just about everything they threw at it. Well, we got a couple of problems they couldn't solve. One of them was the galaxy rotation curve, the observation that stars in the galaxy arms are moving faster than they're supposed to, according to relativity. So to solve this problem, well, astronomers recycled the idea of dark matter. They created dark matter again. The other possibility is a thing called MOND, modified Newtonian dynamics. But that's just a mathematical approach trying to fit numbers into what's out there. No reason for it. 
This dark matter has certain property properties. Number one, it has existed since the creation of the universe, or a month later, let's say. And its composition ranges from WIMPs, which is <clears throat> weakly interacting massive particles, to matches, which is basically anything that's large, like a, like a planet or a black hole, anything that's large that doesn't put out any, any light. Now, of course, if this is real, if matches are real, they couldn't be that ancient. They couldn't have existed back then. So that leaves WIMPs as the only, as the only possibility. Uh, dark matter is mobile. It moves. And it tends to congregate around galaxy, meaning it responds to the, the presence of mass, or at least gravity. It encapsulates galaxies, and the density is the same throughout. But away from galaxy, there's no such thing as dark matter anymore. So if you look at this model here, here's a galaxy or a group of galaxy, and the blue part that you're seeing around it is dark matter. Here's a larger group of galaxies or a larger galaxy, and there's a dark ma matter around it. But if you go between them, there's no dark matter anymore. Now, we're going to look at those in each, each one separately. Dark matter existed since creation. Well, it did exist after the Big Bang. But today, the universe creates dark matter to maintain a constant density of space of dark matter itself and to prevent space-time from ripping or diffusing itself because of universal expansion. Now, you're probably saying you're creating matter out of nothing. Well, not really. Quantum mechanics allows you to create dark matter particles because it's you're using very little energy and that you're allowed to do that. Q, they're mobile. Well, that creates a problem because they are, if they move, then you should be able to detect it. But so far, scientists have no confirmed collisions between dark matter and whatever detectors they put out, which means the Earth is pretty much stationary compared to dark matter. So probably the Earth is embedded in dark matter and travels around the sun with it. And this would explain the null results in the Michael Somori experiment. Later, I'm going to explain stellar aberration, obviously. It congregates around galaxy. Well, dark matter responds to a galaxy's gravity or affinity for matter. So it congregates around it. I have a video there called What is Gravity by Joseph Tomasi. You may want to look at this. It evenly encapsulates galaxies. In other words, Scientists assume that around the object, a star, a planet, a galaxy, whatever, the number of dark matter particles per given volume is a constant. The density is constant. But wouldn't gravity condense dark matter? See, I propose the density of dark matter particles around an object, a star, a planet, or whatever, depends on how close you're talking to about to how close it is to the center of the object and how much mass is in that object. So as you approach a, a, a star, a galaxy, whatever, the density of dark matter, or the density of space around it increases. So out here, the density is very low. But as you get closer and closer, the density increases because the gravity from the dark, from the object itself, from the star, or galaxy, or whatever, is increasing. Now, scientists came up with this diagram, which shows these yellow dots represent galaxies or groups of galaxies. And dark matter seems to follow these filaments around it. So they're saying dark matter is concentrated around it, but outside of dark matter, there is no dark matter anymore. So if you look at this point here, or at this point here, or here, anywhere that's very light, there is no dark matter in there. Well, I'm saying there is dark matter in there. It's just not as so much. So let's try to explain stellar aberration now. 
according to this diagram, my, to my idea, dark matter is dragged around the sun and the planets are embedded in dark matter. It's as if the sun is in the center of a hurricane and this is the dark matter going around it, spinning around it, okay? And if you have a, let's say you have a leaf here, the leaf will be going around the center of the hurricane, the eye, the eye of the hurricane. Of course, there's no friction in dark matter, so the motion is very smooth. So the earth is dragging its own share of dark matter. And that explains why the Michael Somore experiment didn't give you a, uh, give you a null result and give you any results whatsoever. So let's simplify the process a little bit. Let's say for the sake of argument, the earth is in the center of the dark matter, but dark matter has a radius. It's from here to here. That's where it's concentrated most. Outside, dark matter is a very low density. All right. So by looking at this thing here, we say that sunlight, starlight, that enters the denser dark matter around the Earth, it has to bend because of the relatively small Earth mass, the bending is only 0 0.006 degrees, which is Bradley's tilt. If you live on a larger planet, you would have a, a higher tilt. And probably you could use Snell's law to compute the optical density of dark matter around the Earth itself because of this number here. So, does space have a density? Well, this is my rationale for claiming that space has a density. Maybe I should say dark matter has a density. Although it would be interesting if astronomers could confirm that stellar aberration is caused by dark matter and determine the density of dark matter using Snell's law. The Michael Solmori experiment wouldn't be able to prove dark matter because dark matter is traveling with the Earth itself.